Right, I've been uh, programming PIC microcontrollers and in particular this little chap here which is the 12F683 and I chose it because it's got the uh, nanowatt low power uh, technology and uh, in order to get the lowest possible power consumption I wanted to run with the lowest frequency oscillator which is the 31 kilohertz oscillator so let's switch it on so that's um, a derivation of the 31 kilohertz. It's actually divided down, oh, divide by four and then divide by six, I think it is. So it ends up being just under one kilohertz. But then if I press this switch, I can go up to the 125 kilohertz oscillator and the 250 kilohertz oscillator and then the 500 kilohertz, which is outside audible range. So I can't hear that one, but it is definitely still oscillating. Now the purpose of all this is to build um, a charge pump. So the, uh, the, the program produces complementary outputs. So when one of the outputs goes low, the other one goes high. And uh, the only way you can see that is on the oscilloscope. So let's take it back down to the lowest frequency, which is the 31 kilohertz. Now the other thing, of course, is that I wanted is that if you switch it off, when you switch it back on again, it stays at that frequency. So I wanted it always to stay at that frequency, um, even if you get a nasty scratchy connection. So I've got loose wires in here, so I can waggle them around and it always comes back to that same frequency unless I specifically say I want a new frequency. And in fact the frequency setting is written into the E squared prom on the chip in order that it's always there even when uh, the thing has lost power. So let's have a look at these complementary outputs on the oscilloscope. So there are the two complementary uh, oscillator outputs on uh, pins uh, GP4 and 5 and uh, if I press the button you can see that's the 125 kilohertz, although it's um, reduced down in frequency, like I say, by firstly divide by four and then divide by six. Um, that's showing five kilohertz on the frequency monitor. And then that's twice as fast, and then that's twice as fast again. Press it again, and it returns to the uh, slow waveform. And if I switch it off, and then switch it back on, it always restores to the uh, frequency that I've set up. So once it's set up and it's working, I won't be changing it, but I will be uh, powering it down and powering it back up, and I want it to just come back to the same setting each time. Now, a lot of this code is to do with um, checking the power down status. In other words, why did the chip reset? And if it reset because I pressed the button, well then uh, it changes the clock frequency. But really the relevant section um, is this bit right at the end. You've got an exclusive OR here which um, toggles two pins on the GPIO port. They are initially set up here. Um, one is... Uh, where are we? Yeah, here. One is cleared and one is set so that they start off uh, in complementary mode. They're both then made outputs, and then down here, um, the exclusive all will obviously flip one high and the other one low, and then it says go to loop. So the, the main program loop is extremely small. It's this exclusive all uh, command, which is one clock cycle, and this go to command, which is two clock cycles. So there's three clock cycles there, and of course, when you do an exclusive all, you toggle the bits. Well, in order to get a full waveform you need to toggle it twice so that explains why there's a factor of six involved uh, there are three clock cycles and you have to go around the loop twice so that's a divide by six and then the divide by four I was talking about comes because internally in the PIC uh, the main uh, oscillator is divided by four to create the system clock so that's why the 31 kilohertz ends up being about slightly less than one kilohertz in terms of the frequency on the output.